Mind if I join you? Want some? Where you heading? Doris. Me too, Santa Barbara. I'm going to Santa Barbara. You been to Santa Barbara? Yes. You would believe this. I traveled 10,000 miles to get to Santa Barbara. I've been in the Pacific. Almost got my tail shot off over there. It was worth it, though. Somebody's got to do it, right? Right. I was all over the place. Guam, the Philippines. I never knew so many rotten little islands in the ocean. Were you overseas? No. My kid was six months old. Now he walks, talks. He could throw a ball. Can you believe that? He could throw a ball. He's a little man now. I wonder if he recognize him. I brought him one of them samurai dolls. You know the Filipinos made him? You know the Filipinos? They're those tough little guys. I don't know. Anyway, I brought him the samurai doll. Showed him who was trying to shoot his father's tail off. <laughs> what do you got in that case? Money? You know, I never fooled around over there. Not even once. That's all I'd need is to get shot by some jealous Filipino husband. How would that be? <laughs> Hey, there's Santa Barbara. That's right near where I live. Ain't that something? I can't believe it. I made it. Well, here I go. Thanks for putting up with me, mister. Yes, could I speak to the manager, please? Uh, yes, are you the manager? I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Arthur Boyle. I'm executive assistant to Mr. Francis Hogan, a confidential consultant. Yes, I'm sure if you're a subscriber to Forbes or Fortune, you've heard of the gentleman. We have our corporate offices only a few blocks from you on Melrose. And uh, as is our custom, we sent over a member of our staff to pick up some of your excellent culinary efforts for our afternoon meal. Uh, yes, another short fellow. Uh, nothing too filling, you understand, just uh, two hamburgers and some of your domestic beer. At any rate, there must have been some kind of mistake because your representative refused to allow our emissary to charge the meal. Uh, sir. I, I just spoke to a member of our accounting staff, and he assured me that a check has been mailed to you only a matter of a few days ago. The postal service is becoming just deplorable. Uh, sir, are you uh, impugning my credibility? Well, then, sir, I'm afraid a firm shall just have to take its custom elsewhere. Thank you. They make lousy cheeseburgers. What would you suggest as an alternative? How about Chinese food? No, Mr. Lee got a little bit nasty the last time. Wouldn't even send over any of his noodles. As financial risks, we rate something below the Rockefellers every place from here to San Diego. Well, I wasn't hungry anyway. I was. I wonder how long it would take to drive from here to San Diego. Now who do we owe? 
Open the door and find out. Is Mr. Frank Hogan in? Who wants to know? She wants to know. I'm Hogan. My name is Susan Lakeley. That's Arthur Boyle. What can I do for you? Mr. Hogan, I, uh, I need your help. I just don't know where to begin. Try the beginning. Well, it's about my fiance, Michael. Michael Tarlow. What about him? Well, I, I, I just don't know how to say this. You find a way. Well, he hasn't called me for four days. So? Sure. Well, I think I think he may have found another woman. I think he may be nuts. I just want to know what has happened, Mr. Hogan. Well, maybe he just went away for a few days. I just want to know. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Please, Mr. Hogan, find out for me. Lady, I am a private detective. I don't spend my afternoons peeking into some other guy's bedroom window. I don't take jobs like that. I'll, I'll pay you $25 a day. I'll take a Thank job you. like that. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Thank you so much. This is Michael. He lives at the St. George Hotel in La Cienega. Do you know it? No, but I will. Okay, I'll look around. One thing, though. Yes? I'd like something in advance. Well, of course. Uh... What would be satisfactory? I'd settle for a cheeseburger. One day's pay. Okay. I really appreciate this, Mr. Hogan. I really do. Hey, hey. How do we get in touch with you? Well, I'll call you tomorrow. Thank you. Goodbye. I suppose a broad like that shows us. Francis, didn't anyone ever tell you about a gift horse that you should never look one in the mouth? I wasn't looking at her mouth. Let's go get some lunch. Hi, friend. You the night man? No. I'm a brain surgeon. I just like to hang around cheap hotel lobbies. Canadian, Francis. Where did you come from? Jackson Heights. What do you jokers want? We dropped by to see Mike Tarlow. Well, he's not in. Mike and I are old buddies. Worked together in Cleveland. I figured I'd go upstairs and wait for him. Well, you figured wrong. Hey, you're real friendly, you know that? <laughs> I'm a prince. Well, like I say, Mike and I go way back. He'd want me to wait for him. You never met him in your life. You're a flatfoot, and you're not going to wait around anywhere. Now, why don't you and this little creep get lost before I lose my patience? Francis, I don't like this man. I don't either. Hey, how would you like both your arms busted? I don't know. How would you like a hole in your belly? Francis, I thought you were going to bust both his arms. He's got a gun. Hmm. Now, why don't you guys make me another offer? Why don't you bribe me? You got such an honest face. Thank you. This way. It's this one over here. Either you dumbbells want a key? Key? Insult me. Yeah, well, it figures. Hey, watch it! Well, he sure does have some ugly friends.
Marcus, are you all right? I'm just terrific. Thanks for the help. Well, what do you want me to do, punch him in the knee? Besides, when somebody bops you on the head with a gun, you're supposed to fall down unconscious. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't do that, right? Call me, isn't it? Oh, yeah, our boy really likes the horses. I wonder if he's any good. Hey, like a little star in the six, how good can he be? Well, this thing's from Wednesday. I get the feeling that friend Mike hadn't been home for a few days. Somebody else is looking for him. Yeah, somebody I want to see again. Maybe next time you'll fall down unconscious like you're supposed to. I'll work on it. You ever get the feeling that we don't know everything we're supposed to know? Something isn't kosher. Reminds me, what do you want for dinner? Mr. Hogan? Well, we've been waiting for you. Francis. Wake up, look who's here. Hmm. Nice of you to drop by. Did you find Michael? No. Did you find anything out? Yeah. What? What did you find out? I found out I don't like getting bopped in the head. What are you talking about? We went over to your friend's place and somebody else was there. Who? Who was there? He didn't leave his name. <gasps> she crying? Afraid she is, Francis. Mm. Hey, don't do that. I'm sorry. I just don't know what else to do. Well, you might try telling the truth, you know, just for a change of pace. What do you mean by that? Look. Even if you are who you say you are, and even if Tarlo is who you say he is, you are not just worried about him chasing after some other broad. Wouldn't be kosher, right, Francis? There are two things I don't like. One is getting bopped in the head, and the other is when somebody thinks I'm some kind of a yo-yo. Oh, Mr. Hogan. <laughs> oh, I'm so frightened. Please, please. You've just got to help me. Sure. Just as soon as you start telling me the truth. I am telling you the truth. Michael is my fiancé. Suddenly he stopped calling me. I tried to reach him and there was no answer. Now that's the truth. Why would somebody else be looking for him? Somebody with a gun. A gun? I don't know. Well, what does your hero do for a living? Well, he never told me specifically, just, just that he's in business. Good night. <sighs> Mr. Hogan, I'm so scared. Something terrible has happened to Michael. I just know it has. Please, you must help me. I don't know why, but OK. Of course, we'll have to start charging you more now that this is a different kind of case. Oh, I don't care. I don't care about anything except Michael. $35 a day, one day in advance. And a $50 penalty if I get bopped again. $50 for each bop. And one more thing. I want your address and phone number. No more of this jazz about you contact me. Of course, of course. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Hogan. I have no one else to turn to. Do you have any friends around here? No, no one. I met Michael when I was living in New York. When he moved out here, I came out here, here with him. That was, well, that was only a few weeks ago. There's no one except Michael. Family? Oh, there's Daddy. He lives in Boston. Do you know Boston? Good lobster. Yes. Well, Daddy lives in Boston. 
You know, there's some talk about him running for public office and something like that. Anyway, I, uh, I, I couldn't call Daddy about this. Why? Well, Daddy just wouldn't understand. I don't either. Yes, well, I can't thank you enough, Mr. Hogan. Please, be careful. Don't get yourself hurt. I'll bear that in mind. You believe her? No. You? I got this strange habit I can't break of eating. Right now, she's the only thing we've got for lunch. Where are we going? Our friend likes to go to the track. Ten says he goes to the right. You're on. I'll take ten, he goes right. You're covered. Oh, I love you, bird. Double saw buck, the next one goes left. No takers. Double saw, the next guy is wearing a hat. Double saw says you're wrong. Oh, how sweet. I should start going to church. What do you mean? He's got a hat. You should wear it, not Karen. Well, he's wearing it on his hand. Oh. Hey, look who's here. Hey, Hogan, how you been? Hi, hi you Boyle. Sydney. All right. How's it, Benny? Pretty good. Uh, Sydney, winning anything? Oh, uh, it's tough when the horses aren't juiced. <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to? Well, not much. We're looking for a guy. Oh, yeah? Who? A guy named Tarlow. Mike Tarlow. You know him? Brown hair, right? That's it. I know him. A spender. What else? Oh, yeah, he's a torpedo. A torpedo? Oh, Francis, I think I'm going to be ill. Who's he work for? Uh, whoever's got the scratch. You seen him lately? No, not for a few days. Well, if you're looking for him, why don't you ask his fat friend? Who's his fat friend? Oh, yeah, Limeway, the guy that owns the top hat. I know their friend. Oh, well, uh, Limeway's quite a fancier himself. He always bets C notes. Yeah, he's, he's here a lot, always, uh, always sits in the restaurant, always eating. What's that got to do with Tarlow? Well, he's up there with him a lot. Anything else? What do you want? A novel? OK. Thanks. Hey, Hogan, you got any scratch on you? I happen to know of a very sound investment in the seventh race, a filly with the moniker of Pretty Bell. Pretty Bell's a lousy mutter. Well, it ain't raining. Since when was Pretty Bell any good? Since my friend fixed her oats for her. Francis and I have our funds sort of tied up at the moment. You know, investments. Oh, yeah, what's your loss? <laughs> hey, Hogan, hey, wait a minute. You, you got a pen on you? Huh? Five says it's got blue ink. You're on. Okay. Oh, I love you, Hogan. Mm -hmm. And I love you. And you give me back my pen. Ten says he goes to his right. Hey, Eddie. Long time no see, Boyle. Yeah, good to see you out of suspension. I never hit that horse. No, the horse fell over all by himself. <laughs> Um, Manuel, how is that? Hey, Sally. <laughs> hey, Boyle, how's tricks? Oh, usual stuff. Uh, you know Francis. Hey, Hogan. Hi. Uh, gentlemen, Francis and I are here for professional <laughs> reasons. Who are you and the gumshoe looking for? <laughs> As a matter of fact, there is a fellow named Tarlo with whom we would very much like to have a chat. Very popular fellow, this Tarlo. What's that mean? Tarlo is what one would call hot at the present time. Why? A couple of Limeway's gorillas have been asking around about him. I thought Tarlo and Limeway were buddies. Some buddies. Last Thursday, Limeway's courier was bumped off. Limeway's place is a collection point for the boys, you know. Every Thursday, he sends the weekly collections up north by courier. Last Thursday, somebody zapped the courier and took all the scratch, about 400 Gs, which I'd say is a lot of lettuce. And now, all of a sudden, Limeway's looking for Tarlow, and the word is he's not looking for Tarlow to discuss the stock market with him. You figure it out. I'll try. Well, gentlemen, as usual, you've been very helpful. Stick around, boy. We haven't seen you in a while. Oh, I'd like to, but I can't. You know, we have business to do and all. Ciao. So long. Those jocks sure seem to like you. We have a certain rapport. That's because you're the only one that ever looked up to them. Yo-ho, Francis. I think we should pay Limeway a visit. I don't think we should. Why not? He's not a very nice person. If you and I talked only to nice persons, we'd starve to death. Let's get a hot dog.
You have courage, not much style, but courage. My name's Hogan. His name's Boyle. That figures. I understand you're looking for somebody. We all look for people. That's part of life. His name is Tarlow. 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 Do you know him? Sort of. Why are you looking for him? I didn't say I was looking for him. You did. Why are you looking for him? This is beginning to bore me. Carlo owes me money. I can't find him. I understand you're looking for him. You want I should make these two bums get lost? At the present moment, they amuse me. They have some courage. No. Audacity. Tell me, Mr. Uh, Hogan, is it? Mr. Hogan. Do you know what audacity is? A moth has audacity to fly toward a hot light bulb. Like the moth, you have audacity. Do you know what happens to the moth when he gets too close to the hot light bulb? Francis, I think I'm going to be ill. Why are you looking for Tarlo? Audacity, Mr. Hogan. Audacity. Mr. Tarlo has something of mine, something of personal value, something that belongs to my family. You want me to help you find him? My resources are sufficient without your help. Thank you. But tell me, I am much more interested in your tenacity about finding Mr. Tyler. I don't like anybody to owe me money. Hmm. Well, if I find him, when I find him, you will be the first to know. That's very nice of you. My amusement is now at an end. Edgar, tell the moths to fly away. Scram. I think I know the car. You remember that ape that was standing by the table tonight? What about him? He was the same one who bopped you over the head over oh, Tarlow's. it's dark there. How do you know? I saw his shoes. I recognized him. I'm good at things like that. Mr. Hogan, come in, please. I've been waiting for you. Uh, would you like something to drink? No. Well, then, please sit down. Nice place you got. Thank you. I did it myself. I'm an interior decorator. Nice. Did you find anything more out about Michael? Did he ever tell you what business he's in? No, why? Well, your guy's not exactly a scoutmaster. What do you mean by that? He's in business, all right. His business is bumping people off. What? What Francis means is he's a torpedo. And you didn't know anything about that. What are you talking about? Michael? Murdering people? Look at I don't know what you know, what you don't know. I don't even know if I care what you know. You don't believe me. Not one word. <gasps> oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. Michael is in some kind of trouble. He's in danger. I know he is. You know somebody named Limeway? Who? Julius Limeway. Very fat, very rich, very nasty. He's the trouble your Prince Charming's in. Oh. Well, hell, if you're going to do that, I can't talk to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anybody want an apple? 
Mr. Hogan, can't you see that I'm desperate? I have no one to turn to. Please, you have to find Michael. I don't have to do anything. Would it make any difference if I offered you more money? A hundred dollars a day? All the difference in the world. All right, I'll look around some more. But no more surprises, okay? Mr. Hogan, you are the most wonderful person in the whole world. I'm marvelous. I need a room. One dollar in advance. Three, Mr. Smith. Up the stairs and to your left. Give me Madison four five one eight. One eight. Hello, it's me. I'm okay. Listen, something's gone wrong. I can't explain it now. Not on the phone. Something's wrong. You better get down here. I'm at the Chandler. It's a flea bag near Beverly, about a block from the pool hall. You'll find it. Listen, you better get down here. I'm in room 523. And don't take your time. going in here anyway. Interesting clientele. What makes them so interesting? A lot of Tarlow's pals. And torpedoes? More torpedoes than a submarine. Well, maybe I better wait outside. Droop, he's going for the seven. He ain't gonna make the seven. Nine to five, he does. The kid is dead. The kid should pack up his cue. But you should pack up your mouth. That ain't like Droopy. Kids got nothing. You don't have much either. It's going home time. You gotta go home in a minute. Bananas? Hey, Hogan, wait a second. Bananas, I gotta talk to you. What's up? Mike Tarlow. Who? Don't play around. Who's playing? Bananas. What? Mike Tarlow. What about him? I hear he's hot. If he was any hot, he'd be on fire. Why am I? I gotta get back to the game. What's the rush? I'm busy. Like you were busy three weeks ago. What's that supposed to mean? The Barclay job, they'd be very happy to know who blew up their shiny new safe. I don't think I like this. I don't either. Now, is Limeway after Tarlow? That's the word. Did Tarlow hit the courier? You know a lot. I don't know where he is. Anyone who does can make himself a bundle. Is there a contract on him? Ten big ones. Lime white? You got it. Any idea where he is? Enough's enough. This isn't helping. Just one thing. Where it is, he hasn't left town. It won't be long. The boys don't like it when someone hits a courier. They're putting the heat in Limeway, so he wants tall, bad. Who's got the contract? 
Hogan, you're asking me to reveal professional secrets. When was the contract put out? Hey, you said just one more thing, two things ago. Excuse me. A fella could get his face rearranged talking like that. Yeah. When was the contract put out? Funny thing about that. The contract went out that night. Awful early. Before the courier got hit? See ya. Droopy's really good. That's not what I was talking about. Well, what were you talking about? Well, our friend Tarlow was marked before he did his business. Before? Yeah, you know, that limeway's cute. Now, why would he want to hit Tarlow before Tarlow took the money? Hey, Red. Well, look who's here. Don't tell me you're still looking through peepholes, Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your stiff? Oh, uh, some local punk. A torpedo by the name of Tarlow. An accident? Sure. And my mother's the Queen of England. <laughs> <laughs> he took a swan dive from the fifth floor. He's registered under the name of Smith. Now, ain't that original? <laughs> Somebody pushed him. <laughs> no! He thought the street was filled with water. <laughs> Maybe he just had a problem and took a fall. Well, his problem wasn't that he fell. His problem was that he landed. <laughs> you guys know who did it? Who cares? With a punk like that, something's got to happen sooner or later. <laughs> Anybody seen coming or going? Oh, uh, the, the night clerk said that he saw some tomato. Uh, a classy blonde, no less. But he's so drunk, who knows what he says. I'm surprised he didn't say it was Veronica Lake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you guys find anything in the room? Nothing. <laughs> Say, you're sure asking a lot of questions. Why don't you do my job? I'm too <laughs> Very cute. Classy blonde. That night clerk wasn't so drunk. Think it could have been our sweet client? I don't think it was Veronica Lake. I got a feeling we're in over our heads. Over your head, not over mine. Yo-ho, Francis. She really is a good crier. Yeah, she's too damn good. Oh, Mr. Hogan. I I've been so worried. Have you found Michael? Well, uh, <laughs> could we come inside? How silly of me, of course. <laughs> Mr. Hogan, what is it? I got some bad news for you. Bad news? Now, what? don't start crying again, OK? What's happened to Michael? He's dead. Oh. oh, no. Francis, she's crying again. Somebody killed him. Ooh, who did it? Well, the police say they don't know. I think I do. You do? Yeah. Who? I'm not going to say until I know for sure. Mr. Hogan, you've done enough. I don't want anyone else to be hurt. Don't you want us to find out who did it? Oh, it doesn't matter anymore. Nothing matters. Oh, Michael, Michael. <laughs> you go out tonight. No. I was here. I was waiting for your phone call. Well, it's funny. I called you a couple hours ago, and there wasn't any answer. Oh, well, that, that, that must have been when I went out for a walk. I, uh, I was out of milk, so I went down to the store, and I, I was only gone about 10 minutes. Yeah, that must have been when I called you. Mr. Hogan, I want to thank you. You've been just wonderful to me. I, I know this has been very, very that difficult for like you. That sounds like I'm fired. You've been wonderful, too, Mr. Boyle. But don't mention it. I don't think we ought to stop here. Somebody murdered your boyfriend. I think we ought to find out who did it and put him in the clink. Oh, no, no. You must stop now. I I couldn't live with myself if something happened to you. I'm a big boy. I can take care of myself. I'm not so big. No, I, I won't have you take any more risks. 
I promised you $100 a day. I will pay you $300. You only work two days. I insist. You are brave, wonderful men. And I will always be grateful to you. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Probably go away. Where? I don't know. Maybe home. My parents live in Florida. They, they're kind of retired now. I, they live in Palm Beach. Good seafood. Not as good as Boston. I want an apple. I'm just going to have to learn to live without Michael. I guess things just weren't meant to be for us, I guess. How'd you ever get mixed up with that guy? I don't know how to get mixed up with anybody. Usually with your eyes open. Maybe things would have been different if we had met at the right time. Yeah. Things would have been very different. You do trust me. You know I'd like to. And I don't. Mr. Hogan, I'd like to be alone for a while. Sure. You get in touch if you need me. I don't remember you calling her. I didn't. Now we know she was out of the house. She said she was going to the store. You check the icebox? Yeah. You see any milk in there? Matter of fact, I did. How much? Let's see, I think four bottles. Now, can you imagine a chick like that carrying four bottles of milk home from the grocery store? That's very smart, Francis. Babe sure wanted us off the case. Well, if not a total loss. At least we reestablished ourselves in the good graces of Mr. Lee. I ought to keep us in Chinese food for at least three weeks. Limeway. Now, why would Limeway want to knock off Tarlow before Tarlow knocked off the courier? You think Limeway knocked off Tarlow? No. Think it might have been Lakely? I don't know. Maybe. Remind me never to fall in love with that one. Never fall in love with that one. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Everybody knows what's going on except us. Ambassador from Angelo's. Francis, are you all right? I don't know what I'd do without you. Did you get a look at the guy? Only his fist. Was he wearing black wingtip shoes? It... You serious? Yes. Well, I didn't catch the brand name, but it ought to be easy enough to check. I got his footprints all over me. Francis, this is important. Let me think. You mean those shoes with the little holes on the top? Yeah. 
Well, I think he was. Why, you want a pair like that? I think they're fruity. You know, you're 0 for 2 against that guy. The gorilla from Tarlow's room? That's the one. Well, Limeway's his keeper. Why would Limeway want to knock us off? Why don't we go away for a little while? You'd like Guatemala. Well, we're going to see Limeway. I'm going to set that fat man straight. You're crazy, you know that? I'm not crazy. I'm just black and blue. Whatever he thinks I got, I haven't got. And I want him to know that. I really hate getting beaten up. Surprise! It's us, the Moths. Mr. Hogan, you ceased to be amusing to me after three minutes of our last conversation. Well, you are not exactly the Ziegfeld Follies. I'll try to maintain my civility and put up with you for three minutes more. Now, you sent a slob with a cannon around to my place, and he ended up ventilating my office instead of ventilating me. What would make you think that? Call it intuition. I call it stupid. Call it Fred. I don't care. It's true. Last time it took you three minutes to bore me. Now you've done it in less than one. At least we're improving. <laughs> time for you to be leaving. Wait a minute. You're going to listen to me. I got something to say, and I'm going to say it. You want a scene in this joint? You let that gorilla of yours make one move, and you got a scene. Bravo, Mr. Moth. I'll listen to you. Now, you think I got your money. I don't. The only time I ever saw Tarlo in my life, he had a sheet over his head. I don't know who did it. I don't even think you did it, because otherwise you wouldn't have tried to put me on ice. Now, I have spent my entire life chasing cheating wives, repossessed cars. I don't go around blasting torpedoes and couriers. This is all out of my league. Even if, if I believed you, what do you want me to do about it? Two things. I want you to stop trying to put a hole in me. And I want you to fix up the holes you put in my office. Hmm. I'll think about it. You do that. Now, you tell me something, Mr. Hogan. Just what was it that led you to look for Mr. Tarlow in the first place? Well, I told you before. You owed me money. Oh, no. Your performance thus far has been admirable. Don't ruin it with cheap lies. Tarlow had more money than you've ever seen in your entire sordid little career, if you want to call it a career. If it was anything, you owed him money and not the other way around. No, my semi-literate friend, that's not why you were looking for him. Okay. I was looking for Tarlow for a client. That's being a good little moth, and just who was this client of yours? I can't tell you that, and you know it. The ethics of your unethical profession is awe-inspiring. However, it's not good enough. It'll have to do. Ah, I'm not so sure about that. Sounds like more holes in the office, Francis. Your small associate has a strong instinct for self-preservation, unlike you, Mr. Hogan. Now, as we were discussing, who is this client of yours? I don't have a client. I got fired. Not for ineptitude, I hope. It doesn't matter. It does matter, because you can no longer have allegiance to a client who is no longer your client. You know, you better find your money. You could end up being unemployed, too. I want that name, Hogan. Well, I'm not going to give it to you. You're ruining my meal. You broke my window. Not to mention the door. I begin to see that you're a foolish man, Mr. Hogan, and fools bore me. Edgar, do we have any mothballs around? It beat it. 
If you insist on wearing that jacket, why don't you at least switch to white clam sauce? My shoes you got. Excuse me, Monsieur Ramway. Uh, this letter was delivered here by messenger. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, there is also a, a telephone call. This is Julius Langway. Woman. How nice to deal with a woman. Yes, I just received your note. And I find its contents most engrossing. I presume it was you who previously sent me the suitcase. No, madam, I assure you, I am completely sympathetic to your financial plight. It's a subject I have a great understanding of. Now. I am both a businessman and a gentleman. You sound to me like a lady of some quality, so we can deal openly with each other, and we can. What amount did you have in mind, precisely, as a settlement of this matter? Why, that sounds most equitable. Well, why don't you just come round to the club where we can conduct your affairs over a glass of... Well, I would be happy to present myself at your quarters if that would be convenient. Why don't you give me your name and address and I'll... Madam, whatever you wish. Yes. Post office box 3553. The money will be delivered tomorrow. I thank you for calling. You see how easily two adults can reach an agreement? Yes, madam. Thank you. It has been a pleasure. Come on! I'm doing the best I can. Well, try the latch. Okay. Sweet. What do you know? Limeway? Who else? She sure left in a hurry. Hmm. How do you think he knew about this? Well. Seems to be remarkably clever about these things. Look here. Something was written here, then the page was torn off. Give me a pencil. What's it say? What is it? A dozen eggs, a half pound of butter, and a loaf of rye, thinly sliced. Well, it wasn't a bad idea.
You're upset. I'm always upset when I don't know what I'm doing and somebody tries to kill me while I'm doing it. Where do you think she is? Well, if Limeway got her, she's probably wearing a cement bathing suit at the bottom of the river. Yeah. Lakely? Where are you? Little Limeway got you. You have been a bad girl. In my office in 10 minutes. Okay, where? Yeah. Guess who that was? Veronica Lake. Close. Our pretty little tomato is scared out of her head. Who wouldn't be? She wants to meet us in the movie theater. Why a movie theater? Why not? That babe's a cobra. What she want with us? I don't know. We just keep our gloves on. Francis, I think we're being followed. Turn left here. to put a three. I gotta get some popcorn. Popcorn, please. You want some Francis? No. Thank you. You know, this is the one where the guy that owns the bank is selling guns to the Indians, but the guns are no good. Mm. So that really gets the Indians mad. <laughs> She said the eighth row. Oh. Eighth row. I can't see that far. God, it's you. I've never been so scared in my whole life. It's about time we start to level with one another. I need your help. You always say you need my help. Then you start crying, and then you lie in your teeth. Look, I'll do anything you say. Just help me, please. Let's start with the basics. You knocked off your boyfriend. How you pushed him out that window, I don't know, but I'll give you this. You're pretty good. Play game, gonna play them all by yourself. I got no more time for this garbage. What do you want me to do to beg you? I told you that when guy owned a bank. If 
I don't care if you knock your boyfriend off. Just stop acting like a campfire girl when you're around me. It's just that I'm so scared. You ought to be. Lamway wants his money. Give it back to him. That's all he wants, so the boys will take the heat off him. I don't have the money. It's been nice. But... Listen, Hogan, I do not have the money. No, that's the truth. Okay, I've lied to you before. Now, look, I'll stop playing campfire girl with you, but you stop playing priest with me. I don't have the money. If I had the money, I wouldn't be here. If I had the money, I wouldn't need you. Now, that's the truth. That's not even a good lie. Now, why would I lie to Force you? Force of habit. Now, look, if you have ever believed anything in your whole life, you believe me now, I do not have the money. I don't believe you, and it doesn't matter what you want me to do. Go see my way. Limeway already came to see me. He thought I had the money. He knew you didn't have the money. What do you mean? He knew I didn't have the money. Oh, please, just go see Limeway. Tell him I don't want anything. Just that I want to get out of here. Would you mind telling me what the hell you are talking about? I don't want to cramp your style or anything. Please, before it's too late, do what I say. Just tell me why Limeway is after you if you don't have the money. Please! Hey. Hey. Let's get out of here. What's the matter, Francis? What's it look like? Let's get out of here. Here's a cheeseburger, Francis. I'm not hungry. She was telling the truth. About what? She didn't have the money. Makes you think that. Well, Limoy was trying to knock off Tarlo before Tarlo knocked off the courier. And then Limeway tried to blast us. And Lakely said that Limeway knew we didn't have the money. Think about that. Now, why would he want to bump me off before he found out where the money was? If I was dead, I couldn't tell him. Why would he do that if he was after the money? And then Lakely. She said she didn't have the money, and then she gets it. Why? If she didn't have it, who does? Oh, no. No. Well, I don't believe it. What? Well, what do you know? What? Cute. What? Let's go. Where? Stop asking so many questions. Why? Hey, Harry. Hogan! That's the best thing that's happened to me since Hoover lost. <laughs> I'm looking for the Weezer. Where is he? Come back on the phones where he belongs. He's a high-class bookie, not like me. You're good enough for me. You're the only gumshoe I'd ever let kiss me. You're the only fat broad I ever wanted to kiss. <laughs> hey, what do you know, Hogan? Not enough, Weezer. Oil. Weezer? 
need some information. <laughs> so what else is new? What do you know about Limeway? Oh, you picked it goody. Only the best. <laughs> Very interesting fellow. I know. What you might call uh, a major customer. Of yours. <laughs> big loser. How big? Very big. 400,000. Francis, you're amazing. Well, let me guess. He recently paid off all his debts. He's been uh, bad lately. Very bad. The uh, boys are not happy about him. They know. Well, it wasn't hard to figure out. Francis, maybe you're not so amazing. Some tomato starts asking a lot of questions pretty soon. No more tomato. Too many rascals, too messy. You start noticing these things. You start putting two and two together and... Mm, they're very upset. How upset? I gotta get back to my business. Wizard? Yeah. Thanks. Anytime, Hogan. But Hogan, stay away from this one. It's out of your hands. I just want to watch. Thank you. I have neither the energy nor the inclination to put up with more of your drivel. You have been a very naughty boy. Broads. Never underestimate them, Mr. Hogan, and whatever you do, don't trust me. I'm gonna hand it to you, though. You almost pulled it off. True. There never was any money. You used it to pay your debts. You gave the courier an empty briefcase. Then you hired Tarlow to knock him off. That took care of your friend's money. Then you were gonna knock off Tarlow, and you'd be the hero. You know, that really was a very good idea. I was rather proud of it. And the only thing that screwed it up was one sweet little tomato. She wasn't so little. She wasn't so sweet. She and Tarla planned to double-cross you. Tarla opened a briefcase and saw it was empty. He called Lakely. What he didn't know was that she was going to double-cross him. She came down to the hotel and zapped him before he could tell her the briefcase was empty. And I still don't know how she got him out that window. She was resourceful. And she snooped around, snooped too much, the way only a tomato can. She figured it out, then she tried to blackmail you. You must have gone to a college for moths. Then you blew the whole thing when you lost your temper. You never should have had her hit. It made it too sloppy. So many bodies showing up in the morgue and the newspapers. One must never act in haste, Mr. Hogan. Remember that. I will. Broads will do that to you. She had us turned inside out. You know, she's on ice and she still got you. The word's out. And the boys are very upset. I know. And pretty soon a big black car is going to pull up in front of this place and some guys in black suits are going to come in and pay you a little visit. I expect they will. She knocked off Tarlow. She almost got me knocked off. And I wouldn't want to be your insurance broker right at the moment. One little tomato did all that. Hogan, one of the smallest reptiles in the world is the coral snake. It's only seven inches long. It's also one of the prettiest snakes. Its other quality is that it is one of the deadliest snakes on Earth. Well, that's very good. I'm going to have to try to remember that. Thank you, Bronze. Will you gentlemen join me in a glass of wine? Why not? Edgar, two glasses of wine. 
please. To prudence and to moths. There's nothing wrong with being a moth. The moth is at best an amusing pest with a very short life expectancy. Some moths have been known to live longer than some light bulb. There will always be other light bulbs. And other moths. And other tomatoes. You know, there are times when a man prefers solitude. And for me, this is one of those times. Thanks for the one. Oh, Edgar, I forgot. Francis, I'm hungry. 